How's it going, folks? Welcome to what is sure to be another fun at-home table read uh, for a soon-to-be upcoming Oscar winner? Calling a shot on something? Who knows what category, but something. Uh, Barbie. That's right. The surprise hit that was a ton of fun this last year. Uh, I, I loved this thing. It was hysterical. It was heartfelt. It was beautiful. Couldn't wait to do a reading for it. Uh, so let's jump right into introducing ourselves. Hello, I'm George. I'll be doing the action description. I'm Nicole. I will be Barbie Margo. Angie, I'll be Gloria. I'm Cass and I'll be Sasha. I'm Chelsea and I'll be Weird Barbie. Hi, I'm Ann and I'm Barbie. Hi, I'm Mary and I'm Barbie. Hi, I'm Logan and I'm Ken. Hi, I'm Kevin and I'm Ken. Hi, I'm Jared and I'm Ken. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm the CEO of Mattel. And I'm Travis, and I'm Blaine. Alan. Yes, he is. There's only one Alan, and there's only one Travis. All right, George, take us away. All right, this is Barbie, written by Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Exterior, a desert-like landscape day. Like Kubrick's 2001, but with little girls, not apes, and with baby dolls, not sticks and stuff. Since the beginning of time, since the first little girl ever existed, there have been dolls. These little girls rock their baby dolls. They burp them. They cuddle them. They pretend to be moms. But the dolls were always and forever baby dolls. The girls who played that them could, ever pl could only ever play at being mothers, which could be fun, at least for a while anyway, ask your mother. This continued until... One of the girls looks up. Something has appeared in their midst, something new. It's a giant Barbie doll, Barbie Margot, the 1950s Barbie, with her black and white swimsuit and lipstick. The girls react with awe. They're stirred up and excited by this Barbie Margot, not unlike the apes in that Kubrick masterpiece. They try to touch her. And one little girl starts smashing her baby doll against the ground until it breaks into pieces. She lets out a child's howl. One by one, the little girls follow suit, whooping, screaming, throwing their baby dolls away in fits of joyful anger. A final little girl throws her baby doll up in the air, and it's spinning, spinning, with a match cut to Barbie. Interior white space. Barbie stands in an empty space of the soon-to-be-formed Barbie land. It's a void, a limbo. But clearly, in a film studio, the world of Barbie is a Technicolor soundstage. Yes, Barbie changed everything. Then she changed it all again. We go through all the changes to Barbie Margot as she moves through the decades. All of these women are Barbie. And Barbie is all of these women. She might have started out as just a lady in a bathing suit, but she became so much more. We see a row of Barbies. As we move back, we see that Barbie is, a, is every different kind of woman, every profession, every ethnicity, every body shape, every different ability and every gift. As we pan by each one, we hear. She has her own money, her own house, her own car, her own career. Because Barbie can be anything. Women can be anything. We see a map with Barbie land on it and a long red arrow is drawn across a split screen to the real world. And this has been reflected back into the little girls of today in the real world. Girls playing with the different dolls. The girls all mirror what their Barbie is. So the doctor is the doctor, the ballerina is the ballerina, etc. Girls can grow into women who can achieve everything and anything they set their mind to. Finally, we see a vast sea of Barbies, all in different outfits, different hairstyles, adding new friends, speaking different languages. And now Barbie's world gets continually multifaceted and wide-ranging and diverse and interesting. Thanks to Barbie, all problems of feminism and equal rights have been solved. At least that's what the Barbies think. We float above the Barbies into the clouds, then we descend to Earth to see just below the clouds and above land the heart-shaped Barbie land. After all, they're living in Barbie land. Who am I to burst their bubble? And here is one of these Barbies now living her best day every day. 
Interior, Barbie dream house, bedroom, day. Barbie Margot wakes up in her pink dream house. Everything is perfect, of course. This whole sequence is like a movie musical of the best life ever. There are no walls, just like the toys, so Barbie Margot can wave across to another Barbie waking up in her dream house next door. In every other dream house, all the Barbies are having their perfect morning. It's a Barbie ballet. Interior Barbie dream house, bathroom, day. Barbie Margot steps out of her heels, revealing her perfectly arched feet. Barbie Margot stands under the shower head, but nothing comes out. She turns her head this way and that as if there is water, but there is nothing. Her hair looks amazing anyway. She opens an amazing closet and then magically steps out with a new perfect outfit. Interior Barbie dream house, slide, day. Barbie takes her slide down to the pool because she can. Interior Barbie dream house, kitchen, day. She eats a nothing breakfast, drinks a big glass of nothing. Exterior Barbie dream house, day. Barbie Margot stands at the top floor of her house, waves to her friends, and then improbably sails through the air and lands in the driver's seat of her car. When you're playing with Barbies, nobody bothers to walk them down the stairs and out the door, etc. You just pick them up and put them where you want to go. You use your imagination. Behind her, Barbie Alexandra also sails through the air and lands in her dream car. Barbie Margot drives and waves at Skipper in the doorway of her treehouse. Midge appears in Skipper's yard, aggressively waving at Barbie Margot. Midge was Barbie's pregnant friend. Well, let's not show Midge, actually. She was discontinued by Mattel because a pregnant doll is just too weird. Anyway, a Barbie has another big day ahead of her. Exterior Barbie Land Day. Barbie Margot waves happily, sometimes with both hands, to other Barbies as her car silently drives itself through a bustling town. It's like Richard Scarry's busy town for Barbie. It's a wonder of color and shape. The houses are all see-through, like the toys. It's a Noah's Ark of dull-tastic magic. It's also completely run by women. They hold every kind of job. Barbie Margot waves to a Barbie mail carrier and an all-Barbie construction crew. There is the occasional Ken, but mostly it's Barbie. Barbie Margot drives past the Barbie White House, which is, of course, pink. Interior Barbie Oval Office, light pink house day. Barbie Issa Rae, president, maybe in a ball gown, signs a bill into law surrounded by Barbie congresswomen. Barbie Margot stands with the press proud. All right, everybody, turn to the Barbie next to you and tell her how much you love her. Compliment her. Reporter Barbie, you can ask me any question you want. You're so amazing. <laughs> no comment. No, seriously. No, no comment. <laughs> Barbie Issa looks to the Barbies around her. I love you guys. Hugs, sweetness, support. It is really great here. Interior Nobel Prize Theater Day. A big ceremony, very official, proper. A Barbie dignitary in another flouncy ball gown presides. The Nobel Prize in Journalism goes to Barbie. It's reporter Barbie. Woohoo! Barbie Margot leaps to her feet, deeply proud. I worked very hard, so I deserve it. The Nobel Prize in Literature goes to Barbie. It's Barbie Alexandra Ship. Barbie Margot claps and hoots from the audience. She's so proud of her friends. You're the voice of a generation. I know. Interior Supreme Court day. Barbie Sharon argues a case passionately in front of the Supreme Court, all Barbies. Only Barbies are Barbies. And we would argue that corporations have no free speech rights to begin with. So any claim on their part to be exercising a right is just their attempt to turn our democracy into a plutocracy. The gallery erupts into rapturous applause. Some Kens are there for support. This makes me emotional and I'm expressing it. I have no difficulty holding both logic and feeling at the same time. It does not diminish my powers, it expands them. The Chief Justice Barbie hits her gavel, but she can't help but smile. Barbie Margot is there, always cheering on, always the supporter. Exterior Barbie Land Day. Barbie Margot drives past the BIX airport and an 
uh, airplane passes overhead. We move up and the female pilot waves down. Hi, Barbie. The airplane wipes and we keep moving up to find exterior space, day. Astronaut Barbie floats around in space. High fives with another astronaut Barbie. Wave down to Barbie Marco too. Hi, Barbie. Exterior interior Barbie car. Barbie Margo waves up at the astronauts. Yay, space! Finally, she passes and salutes Barbie Mount Rushmore. Remember this. Exterior Barbie land, beach, day. Barbie Margo drives up and hits the beach. This is semi-epic, almost somber in its initial grandeur. Ken Ryan Gosling holds a surfboard and stands atop of a dune. He's waiting for his Barbie, Barbie Margo. But Barbie has a great day every day. But Ken only has a great day if Barbie looks at him. Hi, Barbie! Barbie Margot turns and smiles. Hi, Ken! All the Barbies we just saw are now at the beach. They are all everything. Barbie Margot says hi to Barbies and Ken, or rather the multiplicity of Kens. Hi, Ken! Ken Ryan Gosling groans, waving his hand in dismissal. Hi, Ken! Hi, Barbie! Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Hi, Ken. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. I got us both ice creams. Cool. Hi, Ken. Everyone says hi, Barbie, and hi, Ken, over and over to each other. Way out in the sea, a few mermaid Barbies emerge. Hi, Barbie. 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 <laughs> Hi, Barbie. Hi, Alan. And there's Alan in his striped shirt. Everything stops. <laughs> yes. There's no multiples of Alan. He's just Alan. I'm still uh, confused about that. On shore, Ken Ryan Gosling comes sprinting down the sand. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! Hey, Barbie, check me out. Ken Ryan Gosling, who seems to only exist when Barbie is paying attention to him, runs into the surf, like into it, and flies backward, head over heels, into the air with his surfboard and lands hard. Ken, no! Barbie, Margo, and her other Barbie friends jump up and swiftly coordinate a rescue mission, while the other Kens stand around helplessly. Ken Kingsley protects his ice creams. Oh. Ken? Oh, hi, Barbie. How much of that did you see? We saw the whole thing. Let's get you up on your feet. Barbie, Margo, and Barbie oh. Anna lift Ken up. Wow, you're so strong. Meanwhile, <laughs> Ken Simu laughs derisively. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the beach was a little too much beach for you, Ken. If I wasn't severely injured, I'd beat you off right now, Ken. Oh, I'll beat you off. Oh, uh, I'll beat you off with you any day, Ken. You're on, Ken. Let's beat you off. Anyone who wants to beat him off has to beat me off first. I will beat both of you off at the same time. You don't even know how to beat yourself. How are you going to beat all of us off? <laughs> Why are you getting emotional? Come on, Kens. Nobody is going to beat anyone off. Ken Simu backs off as Ken Ryan collapses into Barbie Margot. An ambulance pulls up and folds out into a hospital room. Ken Ryan is put on a stretcher and hurried across the beach. Barbie, stay with me! Exterior, interior, ambulance slash hospital, moments later. Barbie Alexandra, now in her doctor outfit, tends to a small scratch. While Barbie Hari, also in her doctor outfit, looks at the results of some x-rays. Barbie Margot stands by. Not even broken. Uh, you'll be just fine. Shredding waves is much more dangerous than people know. You're very brave, Ken. Thanks, Barbie. Because, you know, actually, my job isn't surfer. I know. It's not even lifeguard, which is a common misconception. Very common. Because my job is actually just, you know, beach. And what a good job you do at beach. You should heal up in no time. Actually, by the time I finish that sentence... You healed! Fantastic! He leaps off the table and does an action man pose, then... Hey, Barbie! 
Can I come over later? Barbie Margot and Barbara Alexandra share a look. Yeah, okay. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies with playing choreography and a bespoke song, but you can stop by, sure. Cool. Exterior, interior, Barbie Margot's dream house and street night. Barbie Margot has a big block party with all her Barbie friends, plus Alan and Midge, whom we stay away from. DJ Barbie turns up a song, which is the amazing original hit song for this movie. And there is a giant, gorgeous musical number starring the Barbies with Ken's as dancing decoration. It's fun and sweeping and funny and a real toe tapper all around. <laughs> Ken Simu joins Barbie Margot for part of the dance, stoking Ken Ryan Gosling's ire, who is held back in a dancing way by Ken Kingsley. Ken Ryan Gosling jumps up and tries to break dance badly. Ken Kingsley joins in for moral support. Hey, Barbie, check me out. Ken Simu does a flip on the dance floor. Ken Ryan Gosling is enraged. Barbie Margot turns and dances with her friends, whom she'd much rather be dancing with anyway. This leaves the Kens all dancing together, which is just obviously funny. Shouting over the music and dancing, Barbie Margot and friends appreciate how terrific everything is. This is a real rager, Barbie. Thanks, Barbie. Gosh, this night is just perfect. It's perfectly perfect. You look so beautiful, Barbie. Thank you, Barty. <laughs> Barbie, I feel so beautiful. So do I. This is the best day ever. Dancing and shouting and so happy it almost hurts. It is the best day ever. And so is yesterday and so is tomorrow and so is the day after and even Wednesdays and every day from now until forever. Suddenly as the flip side of the coin of this thought, do you ever think about dying? Little record scratch and everything is quiet. All the Barbies and Kens look at her. She's broken the movie. I don't know why I just said that. I'm just dying to dance. There is panic in Barbie Margot's eyes as she starts maniacally dancing, doing about eight different dance moves from over the decades. Starting with the twist, going through disco, punk, break dancing, etc. The music picks back up and she's relieved, although troubled by what just happened. She shakes it off and continues to party. Maybe there's nothing wrong. Later that evening, after their fun party, Barbie Margot and Ken Ryan Gosling stand in the moonlight. Ben or Ken leans forward for a goodnight kiss. He gets part of the way there and then pulls back. Wow. You can go now. I was thinking maybe I could, you know, stay over tonight. Why? Because we're boyfriend, girlfriend. To do what? You know, I'm not actually sure. But I don't want you here. She's smiling her gorgeous smile. Not mean, just truthful. Okay. Is it Ken? No, Ken is just a good friend. And after all. This is my dream house. It's Barbie's dream house. It's not Ken's dream house. Right as always. And it's girls night. We cut to the other side of them to reveal that all of Barbie's, Barbie Margot's friends are there watching it all unfold. Come on, Barbie, slumber party. Come on, the president is here. I am. You're welcome. Every night is girls' night. Every night, forever. Every night. Forever and ever. Good night. She runs back to her friends. They scream and are thrilled. Phew, Ken was a lot. I love you too, but I can't. And I gotta go. And then he leaves. Thank goodness. She likes Ken, but she needs her space. Interior Barbie dream house, bedroom, night, later. Barbie Margo tucks herself into bed. Good night, Barbies. I'm definitely not thinking about death anymore. Her eyes fly open. She is, though. Interior Barbie dream house, bedroom, morning. Morning! Barbie opens her eyes, ready for an amazing day. But something is off. She can feel it. She feels groggy. Her eyes don't want to open. She stretches, stiff from sleeping. She makes a face, cups her hands, and smells her breath. Yuck. 
Interior Barbie dream house bathroom day. She brushes her teeth with nothing, but the gesture makes a difference. Same shower situation, but suddenly Barbie yelps and leaps out of the way of the non-water. Oh, that's cool. Uh, how was how is the water that isn't even there cold? She adjusts the knobs and then steps back under the non-water better. The kitchen, same breakfast situation, but the plastic waffle is burnt. How is that even possible? She pours milk into a glass, which is nothing, and drinks, spits it out, looks at the container. Expired. Barbie Margot turns and sees because remember there are no walls. Another Barbie at her breakfast table who smiles and waves. Barbie Margot tries to muscle through it. She's going to try to smile her way out of this, darn it. But what is this new feeling? Is it shame? Exterior Barbie Dreamhouse Day. Barbie Margot stands at the edge of the roof, waiting to be flown into her car, and she leans into the air and falls, just belly flops into the air. She pops up out from behind her car, trying to save face, waving. I'm fine. Hey, <laughs> okay People look at her curiously. What is wrong with her? Exterior Barbie Land Beach Day. Barbie, Margo, and Co. all hang out together on the beach. It's pretty fun, but not perfect fun. The Barbies play a wicked game of beach volleyball while the Kens cheer, like reverse Top Gun. Remember this. Great cheer, Kens. Everyone else laughs earnestly, but when Barbie, Margo tries, it's forced. <laughs> Something's wrong. Why can't she really laugh? Come on, Barbie. Let's run toward the water. Barbie Margo steps up on her tiptoes and wobbles weirdly on the sand. She can't hold it any longer. Her foot cramps and she topples to the ground. She looks down and discovers that her feet are shock, horror, no longer arched. She's just got big old flat feet. She gasps and tries to crawl herself to the beach vents. Barbie Alexandra, Barbie Hari, Barbie Sharon, Barbie Emma, and Barbie Anna rush over. Hey, Barbie, are you okay? Yeah, Barbie. It just fell. Fell? I'm so embarrassed. Barbie doesn't get embarrassed. Barbie, I think my... <laughs> I don't even have context for this, but I think my feet are, my heels are on the ground. What? I'm no longer on my tiptoes. Let me see. <gasps> Barbie Harry throws up nothing. Same with Barbie Alexandra. Ken Kingsley joins in, throwing <sighs> up nothing. Stop it, Ken. Oh. <laughs> uh, sorry. The Barbies ignore him. I know I'm stereotypical Barbie and therefore don't form conjectures concerning the causality of adjacent unfolding events, but some stuff has been happening that might be related. Bad breath this morning, a cold shower, burnt waffle, falling off my roof. Barbie Alexandra gasps, hand over mouth. Your mouth functioning. What? No, I'm just, am I? I've never seen this kind of malfunction. It's usually just hair related. You know, you're gonna have to visit weird Barbie. But I've never had to go visit weird Barbie. That's because you've never malfunctioned. I heard that she used to be the most beautiful Barbie of all, but then someone played too hard with her in the real world. Cut to the real world with a little girl doing that thing we all do to our Barbies at some point. She snips off her hair, colors her face with marker, lights her hair on fire, puts her in the splits and drop kicks her into her toy bin. Back to Barbie Margo looking concerned. Barbie Hari is in a trance of the legend of weird Barbie. And now... She's faded to an internal eternity of making other Barbies perfect while failing more and more into despair herself. And that we call her weird Barbie all the time, both behind her back 
And also to her face. Anyway, you have to go see her. Oh, she's so weird. And why is she always in the splits? Exterior, interior, weird Barbie's weird house day. Barbie Margot climbs the seemingly never-ending stairs up to the weird house. It's like an abstract art version of every girl's dream house after she's played with it for years. Think Jeff Koontz, Gowdy, Mirakami, all put in a blender. I would never wear heels if my feet were shaped this way. Barbie Margot steps gingerly in, looking around. Um, hello? Barbie Margot frowns. A dog, Tanner, passes by and poops out little plastic pellets. Barbie Margot steps around them. What's cooking good looking? A pool of light illuminates weird Barbie. She's in the splits, has an unintentionally asymmetrical short haircut and mismatched clothes. She's like David Bowie plus a hairless cat. Welcome. Welcome to my weird house. Weird Barbie hitches her leg down and lopes oddly into a giant room. Maybe she does a flip or two. Sorry about the dog crap. Why would anyone want to introduce pooping into a doll universe? It's beyond me. Or pregnancy. So what can I do you for? I had to come see you about my feet. They're, um... Never seen that before. Yeah. Uh, can you fix him? You're stereotypical, Barbie, aren't you? Yeah. That kid of yours is one nice looking little protein pot. I guess. I'd love to see what kind of nude blobby's packing under those jeans. She claps her open hands together like the way little kids mash Barbies together. Barbie Margot watches with horror. It goes on too long and then stops as suddenly as it started. Anyway, what preceded this? Oh, nothing. No, really fun game of volleyball. Really? It's lots of day. Weird Barbie looks at her horrified, small voice. Is that a problem? Oh. What? Oh. What? I had heard this was possible, but I've never seen it happen before. Never? You've opened a portal. I didn't open a portal. Well, someone did. There's a rip in the continuum that is the membrane between Barbie land and the real world. And if you want to be stereotypical Barbie perfect again, you got to fix it. Or you're going to keep going funny. Look at your upper thigh. She does. Ah! A dimple. What is that? Cellulite. It'll spread everywhere. And then you'll start getting mushy, sad, and complicated. No. Mm -mm. What do I have to do? With that, Weird Barbie turns and travels through her house, up and over all of the strange architecture. Barbie Margot tries to keep up. Well, you have to go to the real world and find out who's playing with you with me? Weird Barbie goes through the mess around her, finding a technical drawing which she refers to briefly and then gets tired and throws it back on the stack. We're all being played with, honey. Usually there's some kind of separation. There's the girl, aka the player, and the doll, aka the playee. And never the twain shall cross. The twain is crossing? Yes. The girl playing with you must be sad, and her thoughts and feelings and humanness are interfering with your dullness. Am I being too technical? Why would she be sad? We fixed everything so that all women in the real world are happy and powerful. I don't know. If you ask me, you're responsible for this too. Usually it takes two to rip the portal. Me? I, I didn't do anything. I've only ever wanted things to be exactly as they are. Well, however it happened, you and she are becoming inextricably intertwined. You have to help her to help yourself. Weird Barbie holds her hands out. This is a Matrix moment, where Barbie Margot is offered two different versions of life, i.e. red pill and blue pill. Except for Weird Barbie uh, holds a high-heeled shoe in one hand and a Birkenstock sandal in the other. 
very dramatic, full of meaning and moodiness. What is that? So what will it be? You can go back to the way your life was and not even remember that this happened. Or you can know the truth about the universe. Woo. The question is planted in your mind. Which choice is yours? Breaking the mysterious spell, Barbie Margot answers instantly and with too much chipper energy. The first one, the high heel. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll do a redo. You're supposed to want to know. I don't. Babe, listen, you have to want to know. I'm not adventure Barbie. I'm stereotypical Barbie. I'm like the Barbie you think of when someone says, think of a Barbie. And that's me. That is so sad. <sighs> okay. I'm ready to forget now. No! Why? You're doing this anyway. I just gave you a choice so you'd feel like you were in control. So there is no first option? No! You have to go fix the rip yourself. Don't blame me. Blame Mattel. They make the rules. I, I don't want to go. Fine. Get cellulite. I don't care. Weird Barbie turns away on Barbie Margot. She summons all her bravery. She wants to meet the moment. Send me through the portal. Weird Barbie laughs and then opens a toy manual. <laughs> oh no, there's no portal to the other world. That was just a figure of speech. We see the different vehicles as she rattles off. Okay, so it's a sports car to a speedboat to a rocket ship uh, to a tandem bike to a camper van. Fun. To a snowmobile, brrr, which will take you most of the way to the state of Los Angeles, where you'll don neon rollerblades and enter the country of California. Weird, I know, but best if you don't think about it too much. Weird Barbie takes a swig from a flask with nothing in it, of course. Presentation done. After all the energy, she now seems tired of this whole business and hurries Barbie Margot out. When I'm there, how do I find this girl? You will know. And how will I get back? Same way you came, in reverse. Like I should go forward, but do the order backward, or move backward and do the order backward, or... Reverse everything. Okay. Okay. If you don't find her and fix things, what's ugly will become uglier, and what's weird will become weirder. Barbie Margo screams. Whoop! You'll look like me. Barbie Margo screams again. <laughs> Gee, thanks. I understand. I set myself up for that. Anyway, I believe in you. Uh, thank you. Bye. Exterior Barbie dream house slash call it a sack morning. Barbie Margo's having a send off party with all of the Barbies. There's a big banner that reads Bon Voyage to Reality and good luck restoring the membrane that separates our world from there so you don't get cellulite. The Kens all stand to the side, a bit like men in a baby shower. There, but not. Ken Ryan Gosling and Ken Simu do a jealous mingle. <laughs> I guess she's going without you. No. She really asked me, but I prefer to stay here. Why? Are you scared? No. I'll bet you're scared, and I bet she doesn't even want you to go. You bet both of those things incorrectly. I bet the other direction. Which way is that? You don't even know. Barbie gathers around her car with her friends. I just don't want to leave. I'm trying to find reasons not to leave. I'm going to miss you guys so much. I just wish someone could come with me, but you can't. <laughs> I should do this alone. Back to the Kens. The other group of Kens are playing a very mysterious game, which appears to be mostly guessing. What bird am I thinking of? Parrot. Uh, dolphin. I mean, no, a bird. Pelican. Back to the Barbies. All the Barbies finish bringing her stuff to the car. We'll miss you, Barbie. I'm going to be back in no time with perfect feet and we'll forget this ever happened. You'll get to see all the good work we've done to fix the world. You'll be such a hero to them. All those grateful, powerful women who owe their wonderful lives to Barbie. I bet every woman will say thank you and give you a really big hug. Yes, you're right. Okay, here I go. Bye. 
Barbie. Barbie Margo hops in her convertible, waving and driving off into the sunset. Interior convertible slash exterior Barbie land, open road, morning. Barbie Margo drives and sings along super loud to Indigo Girls closer to fine, which for some reason they have in Barbie land. She's loving this adventure, actually. I went to the doctor. I went to the mountains. I looked to the children. I drank from the fountains. <laughs> Ken Ryan Gosling pops up in the back seat singing, and Barbie Margo screams her head off, and he screams at her screaming. <laughs> they skid off the road, flipping over a few times, and then landing upright in the desert. Closer I am to fine. Still hysterical. What are you doing here? I'm coming with you. Please get out. No, I can't. Look, I made a double bet with Ken. Please, you can't make me look uncool in front of Ken. Ken's not cool. He is to me! You're just gonna slow me down. What if there's beach? You'll need someone who's a professional in that. Did you bring your rollerblades? I literally go nowhere without them. She thinks and then relents. Okay, let's do this. And I sit in front. No! He accepts this, and they're off. Dramatic music as they go through all the different kinds of transportation. So Barbie and Ken set off on their adventure to the real world. Exterior transportation. Sports car. Back in their car and on the road. Into speedboat. Barbie drives the speedboat while Ken hides from a seagull. Rocket ship. Barbie and Ken wear spacesuits and ride a rocket, which makes zero sense. Tandem bike. Through the prairie or the French Alps, Barbie on the front of the bike, Ken behind. Camper van. In a national park, they screech to a stop, jump off their bikes, and set up a little grill. Ken flips a burger while Barbie chills out in a lawn chair, reading a tabloid. Snowmobile. Back to the action. Ken hangs on to Barbie for dear life as she catches air over slaloms. Exterior Venice Boardwalk. Rollerblades. Finally, they're in the sunny state of California, in the town of L.A. on the boardwalk of Venice Beach, wearing rollerblades. Barbie Margo wears a bikini and Ken wears a onesie. They're openly getting a lot of looks. Just the two of them in real Los Angeles is genuinely strange and hilarious. They appear as extremely good-looking aliens. Wow. The real world. Ken smiles and waves, loving all of this. But Barbie Margo looks confused, bordering on anxious. Note, this is more real than Barbie Land, but still heightened, like a 1980s comedy. Slightly exaggerated. Like, there's no way Ferris Bueller sang the Beatles at that German parade, but we allow it because it's fun. Same here. See, I told you there'd be beach. Give us a smile, Blondie. People are laughing and pointing and amused and also leering. What's going on? Why are all these men looking at me? They're also looking at me. Ken winks at someone who winks back. I love this. I feel kind of ill at ease. I don't know the word for it. Like, I'm conscious of it, but it's myself I'm conscious of. I'm not getting any of that. I feel appreciated, but not ogled. Mine has no undertone of violence. Mine very much has an undertone of violence. Up ahead is a construction site. Workers on break for lunch. Oh, great. A construction site. We need that good feminine energy. But as they get closer, it's not what she thought. Construction workers eat sandwiches and cat call Barbie. Do fries come with that shake? If I died and got to heaven because you're an angel. If I said you had a hot body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> Is that a mirror in your pocket? Because I can see myself in your pants. I don't know exactly what you all meant by those little quips, but I'm picking up on some sort of entendre, which appears to be double. And I would just like to inform you that I don't have a vagina and he doesn't have a penis. We don't have genitals. The construction workers look at them blankly and then shrug, unbothered. This is Los Angeles after all. Live and let live. Far out! That's okay. You do whatever works. Whatever works, you do you. 
They're actually very sweet guys, I guess. She blades away as Ken Ryan Gosling tries to impress the construction workers. I have all the genitals. He catches up to Barbie Margot. Jeez, you would think a construction site at lunchtime would be the perfect place for a little woman power. But this one was so male. Yeah, everything is almost like reversed here. There's a slight moment here, like maybe he's on to something. But they're distracted as they pass a large billboard advertising the Miss Universe contest. Look, the Supreme Court. You're so smart. Another beach dude passes by and slaps Barbie Margo on the ass. Barbie Margo punches him in the face. Ken screams. Interior Venice Central Booking Day. Barbie Margo and Ken Ryan Gosling's mug shots. Then they're being fingerprinted. Over and over again, because the cops can't find any prints. The cops drool over Barbie Margot. Yeah, I love me a leotard. I love the elbow pads. I think we should get some different clothes. Exterior Venice Beach storefront day. Ken Ryan Gosling exits wearing all denim with fringe and a cowboy hat. Followed by Barbie Margot, who wears a pink cowgirl outfit. All the security lights and bells go, but they're oblivious. We look great. I love fringe. I love denim. A security guard rushes after them, panicked. Hey, hey, you do? What are you doing? You have to pay for those. They give chase. Interior Venice Central booking again, day. Barbie, Margot, and Ken Ryan getting fingerprinted. The male cops are still leering. She's even sexier in clothes. I know, because you can imagine more. You know what? Keep them. Exterior police station day. Barbie, Margot, and Ken Ryan Gosling emerge into the midday L.A. sun, wearing their stolen slash gifted clothes. Weird Barbie said, I'd know how to find this girl, but I have no idea. <sighs> what would smart Barbie do? I just need to clear my mind so I can think. Barbie sits down on a bench, almost like she's meditating. I hate it when people think I'm so bored. <laughs> faster I figure this out, the faster we get home. She closes her eyes. Ken Ryan Gosling gets all antsy like a kid, unable to sit still. What am I supposed to do? Go for a walk or something! He makes faces, then goes for a walk. Don't go far! Exterior, Century City, day. Ken Ryan Gosling walks under a sign for Century City. He looks up. A tall building looms over him, and he starts putting together the world a little bit. He sees a gym full of men, a man in a mink, a policeman on a horse, a hummer stuffed to the brim with businessmen. Generic men in business suits shaking hands, having generic business conversations. Great deal, great deal. Uh, we're all going to make a lot of money. A female secretary tries to come up and tell her boss something. He holds up his hand to stop her. In a second, Margaret. Shall we shake on it? She backs away, submissive, as they all shake madly. Ken Ryan cannot believe what he's seeing. Are they more powerful than she is? How is this possible? Ken Ryan Gosling rides an escalator up to a giant video screen playing images of big man stuff. Money, presidents, golf videos, mini fridges, a bunch of dudes working out at the gym. Men in sports, men in statues, men in paintings, important men in photographs, the grease lightning scene from Greece, all culminating in Sylvester Stallone in a mink coat. Men everywhere, and then just another horse, and then more men everywhere. Exterior police station, day. Barbie Margo still sitting on the bench, breathes in and out, and sees glimpses of a girl. Maybe a pigtail, some chipped nail polish. She's shining or something like that, but without the horror. The girl laughing with her mom, eating ice cream. The girl opening the door saying, Mom, I had a bad dream. The girl playing Barbies with her mom. Her mom shows her a Barbie idea sketch and the girl applauds. The girl is getting older, moving away when her mom tries to show affection. The girl plops a box of her Barbies and Barbie accessories in front of her mom, clearly marked Goodwill. The mom sadly drops her daughter off at school, and when she tries to wave at her, the girl pretends not to see her. It's junior high. Everyone is their worst self in junior high. Close on Barbie Margot, a tear rolls down her face. Barbie opens her eyes. She wipes the tear from her face. 
She looks down at the moisture in her hand. She's never cried before. That felt achy, but good. Barbie Margot looks around. Across the street, she sees a park filled with mundane and beautiful and funny and sad moments of everyday life. A young couple with a baby, kids playing tag, a teen girl crying and being comforted by another girl, best friends laughing together, a middle-aged couple walking hand in hand, three friends in an argument, an old man feeds the birds, someone reading a book, a man with a child, guys kicking a ball around, 20-somethings arguing, a young man who looks like he's been crying. Next to her, an older woman sits on a bench reading. Barbie studies her for a moment. Barbies don't get old, so this is something she doesn't have experience with. The woman, as if she can feel Barbie's gaze on her, looks up. They meet eyes. The older woman nods in greeting. You're so beautiful. I know it. They laugh. It's lovely. Ken runs up to her, breaking the moment. Barbie! She turns to him, and he and Barbie excitedly say, I've got it! Got it! What have you got? You go first. No, you. Let's go at the same time. Shh. Men rule the world. Well, Wait, what was that? The girls at school. But what did you? Nothing, it doesn't matter. Let's go to school! They both run off together, and Barbie sneaks a glance back, but the old woman is back to reading her newspaper. The moment has passed. Exterior Mattel headquarters, day. An imposing many floor building, masculine, strong. A phone is ringing from somewhere. We boom down from the top floor all the way down. Interior Mattel headquarters, lowest floor, a day. An endless forest of cubicles. Hello? Split screen with interior FBI headquarters, day. Men in those aviators for no reason. Pictures on cork boards. This is Dan at the FBI. This is Aaron at Mattel. I don't give a flying squirrel who you are, Aaron. What are you? Like an intern? I, I mean, not really. And two of your dolls have gone loose. Impossible. How do you know? Don't sass me, Aaron. A couple of blondes answering to Barbie and Ken roll rollerblading in Santa Monica claim to have no genitals. Genital less? We're going to need Mattel's help, meaning the eagle. Don't crap the bed, Aaron. I won't. Sweating bullets, he hangs up the phone. This is bad. This is really bad. Another younger employee peers over the top of his cubicle. What? When? About 10 years ago, a woman named Skipper turned up in Key West at some family's home and asked to babysit the kids. Oh, sorry. What? Sorry, can we start all over? The corporate. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, this is bad. This is really bad. Uh, another younger employee peers over the top of his cubicle. <laughs> what? Uh, this happened once before. Popping up from another cubicle, three cubicles away. What? When? About 10 years ago, a woman named Skipper turned up in Key West at some family's home and asked to babysit the kids. Uh, she then tried to take their toddler surfing. We were able to straighten it out and keep it under wraps. Uh, but this is serious. I'm going all the way up. No one goes all the way up. You may never come back. I know. Interior Mattel headquarters, elevator. He takes a deep breath and steps into the elevator. Floors tick by, 99, 100, 101. Walks briskly down a huge hallway. Interior Mattel headquarters, boardroom reception. Close on some sketches of Barbie. But these Barbies look distressed, mascara running down her cheeks from crying. She wears the identical clothes to Barbie Margo. A woman, Gloria, sits at a reception desk. She's in her late 30s, but has something of the kid in her, a pair of pink shoes. We love her. She's drawing the sketch. Gloria has an old Barbie on her desk, which resembles Barbie Margot. And next to that, a photo of her daughter. She's singing closer to find to herself. Aaron stops at the desk. Gloria is so lost in her drawing, she doesn't see him. He clears his throat. Hmm. 
<clears throat> um, Gloria? He snaps his fingers. She shakes her head and looks at him. Oh, um, hi, Aaron. New designs? Uh, yeah, for some reason I just started drawing her. I don't know why. She hands them to him. It's crippling shame Barbie, irrepressible thoughts of death Barbie, and full body cellulite Barbie. Yeah, okay. I have to talk to the top brass. They're in a big corporate ideas sesh. No one is to be admitted right now. But, but Aaron is walking towards the door. Aaron, stop it. <laughs> Interior Mattel headquarters boardroom. He opens the door to a giant pink glittery boardroom. It's like the inside of a five-year-old girl's sparkly heart. <laughs> Always be empowering girls. Always. What do we really sell? We sell dreams, imagination, and sparkles. And when you think of sparkle, what do you think after that? He doesn't wait for an answer. Already so pumped to say. Female agency. Um, excuse me. A table of men turns around all at once. They're all wearing suits, but it somehow feels like tuxedos. Who are you? Uh, Aaron Dickens, sir. Uh, we're in the middle of a major sit down here, Aaron Dickens. But I think you're going to want to hear this, sir. Can you just email it? You can uh, send it uh, to me, e uh, EOD. <laughs> End of day. Uh, may I put it in a whisper, sir? Ugh, fine. Whisper me. Aaron Dinkins leans in and whispers something to the Mattel executive number one. He's ashen. He turns and whispers to the man next to him, and each man in turn reacts and whispers to the man next to him. Finally, the CEO listens with shock. Oh! Reaping the skipper in Key West! And with all due respect, that was skipper, sir. Um, this is... Barbie. They all react. The Mattel CEO stands up dramatically. This got out that our dolls were coming to Los Angeles from Barbie land as life-sized versions of themselves and roaming the earth would be very bad for business. Cut two. Gloria listens outside the conference room doors. She shakes her head, doing some insane calculation. Barbie? In the real world? No, it's impossible. Right? We cut back inside the boardroom. We've got a definite situation on our hands. Get her tropic! I guess that's not enough! What's your name again? Uh, Aaron Dinkins, sir. Aaron Dickinson? Uh, Dinkins. Um, is Barbie Land like an alternate reality or like our imaginations come to life or... Yes. Yes. Think of it... That's a town in Sweden, Aaron Dinkins. How much do you weigh? Never mind. Th this sounds like a job for the box. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. No one rests until this doll is back in the box. Exterior junior high school afternoon. Barbie Margo and Ken Ryan Gosling approach the school. Barbie Margo sticks out even more here as the kids are all wearing dark colors, trying not to be noticed, you know, junior high school. Davy Crockett, junior high school, just like I saw in my vision. A man on a horse. We better find her soon. I've started to get all these weird feelings. Like I have fear with no specific object. What's that? Anxiety. I have it too. They're just awful at this age. I feel amazing. That's because the kids don't take it out on dads. Cool. Kids are running everywhere. Barbie Margo and Ken Ryan Gosling try to not look sketchy. She's got to be somewhere. They pass the library and Ken says kind of suspiciously. Hey, I'm just going to pop into the library and see if I can find any books on trucks. Okay, but don't get in trouble. Well, exterior junior high school cafeteria. Barbie scans all the different girls' faces and then bam, like Roy Scheider and Jaws seeing that kid getting eaten. She sees her girl, the one from her vision. Her girl is sitting at a very prominent table with a group of other pretty 13 year old girls. She's clearly popular. They all have hydro flasks, big t shirts, scrunchies. 
Mario Badescu or whatever kids are into after this pandemic. She begins to walk towards the girl, but is interrupted by. Okay. What are you doing? Indicating the one that she thinks is her girl. What's that girl's name? That's Sasha. Hey, Sasha! No, don't talk to her. Sasha can talk to you, but you can never talk to Sasha. She'll crush you. Don't worry. Everyone likes me and thinks I'm cool and pretty. Uh-huh. Thank you. And then she goes up to talk to Sasha, and all these 13-year-old queen bees turn to look at her. No, this is the opposite of what Barbie and we think will happen. Hey, ladies. Sasha, what's up? Sasha and her friends stare at Barbie Margo, stunned. Who are you? I'm your favorite woman of all time. You really Barbie. think you're Barbie? Well, yeah. They burst out with lots of mean laughter, unable to stop. <laughs> so do you think you're like from a safe asylum? Tell us more about how you think you're Barbie. Okay, so you're like Barbie, Barbie, like professional bimbo? No way. Barbie's not a bimbo. Barbie's a lawyer and a doctor and a senator and a Nobel Prize winner. You're a Nobel Prize winner? Well, not me, but Barbie is. They all laugh in her face. Again, Barbie is confused. Don't you guys, I mean, are you guys going to thank me and give me a big hug for being your favorite toy? We haven't played with Barbie since we were like five years old. Yeah, I hated dolls with hair. I played with Barbie, but it was like a last resort. I loved Barbie. You give that girl a look. Anyways, even that was horrible for us. Horrible? Why? Her friends egg her on. They know that Sasha could totally flatten someone. Come on, Sasha. Give it to her. Destroy Barbie. Okay, Barbie. Let's do this. Sasha's verbal jabs are like a boxer, relentlessly landing punches in a ring. Maybe we even shoot it like Raging Bull. She's clearly so smart and so articulate that you can't help but admire her. You've been making women feel bad about themselves since you were invented. No. I think you got that the wrong way around. You represent everything wrong with our culture. Sexualized capitalism, unrealistic physical ideals. Whoa. Hang on. You're describing something stereotypical. Barbie is so much more than that. Look at yourself. Well, I am actually stereotypical Barbie. You set the feminist movement back 50 years. You destroy girls' innate sense of worth, and you're killing the planet with your glorification of rampant consumerism. But, but I'm supposed to help you and make you happy and powerful. I am powerful, and until you showed up here and declared yourself Barbie, I hadn't thought about you in years, you fascist. Barbie bursts into tears and runs away. The other girl watches Barbie run and just shakes her head. They never listen. We stay with Sasha for a moment, who suddenly feels bad. Under all the bravado is a lot of feeling. Exterior junior high school. Meanwhile, Ken runs out of the school library with a bunch of books in his arms. Men and Wars, The Origins of the Patriarchy, Why Men Rule, Literally, and Just One Called Horses. His mind is blown. A female pedestrian stops and asks casually, Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? You respect me. Um, do you know what time it is? No, I do not. Thank you. Ken feels like he was just declared king. Why didn't Barbie tell me about patriarchy? Which, according to my understanding, is where men and horses run everything. I shall seek my fortune there. Quick, impossible montage. Interior office building. Ken Ryan Gosling addresses a businessman. 
I want a high level, high paying job with influence. You need at least an MBA and, and many of our people have PhDs. Isn't being a man enough? Actually, right now it's the opposite. Well, that's not what books say. You guys certainly aren't doing patriarchy well. Oh, we're doing it well. We just hide it better now. Interior doctor's office. We watch Ken also get rejected from a doctor's office. No, I won't let you do just one appendectomy. I'm a man. But not a doctor. He's... No. Can I talk to a doctor? You are talking to a doctor. Give me a coffee. I need a clicky pen and a white coat and a sharp... Th oh, there he is. Doctor! Exterior Venice Beach. And even from a beach, a lifeguard listens, perplexed. I would like to apply for the job of beach. Oh, so you want to be a lifeguard? Oh, I'm not I'm not trained to go over there. I'm trained to confidently stand over here. He points to the sand at his feet. But nobody is in danger here. And even if they were, I'm not trained to save them. Ken trudges away, rejected by the lifeguard. Can't even do beach here! Clutching his books, he returns to the school. Exterior junior high school. Barbie Margot is sitting in the parking lot, still fully weeping from her interaction with Sasha. You think some of fashions? I don't control the railways or the flow of commerce? Ken Ryan has arrived back at the school and approaches the same female pedestrian, now with her tween daughter. She's not thrilled to see him again. There you are. That went terrible. I need a place where I can start patriarchy fresh. Barbie Margot is approached by a bunch of CIA or FBI looking types. Dark suits, mirrored sunglasses, earpieces, but emblazoned with the Mattel logo. Miss Barbie. It's just Barbie. You're going to have to come with us. Ken watches from a distance. He freezes. Who are you? We're Mattel. Mattel. Thank goodness. I've got to talk to someone in charge. It's all backwards here. Men look at me like I'm an object. Girls hate me. Everyone thinks I'm crazy and I keep getting arrested. Just step this way, ma'am. I also just learned how to cry. First I got one tear and then I got a bunch. She keeps talking as Ken has a little conversation with the female pedestrian. What do I do? Should I go after Barbie into that scary unmarked black truck? A truck car I would like to have, actually. Nah, should we find it's Mattel. I know. I'll go back to Barbie Land. Wait until I tell the Kens what I've learned. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. It's Barbie Land. Let's go that way. Ken hurries off, and Sasha gets into her mom's car. It's Gloria, the receptionist from Mattel. Now we get it. Hi, honey bear. Mom, don't call me that. Shoot, sorry. I got off early because of crisis at work. I thought we could go get soft serve this afternoon. Gloria and Sasha see Barbie Margo getting into the van. Thank God they arrested that nut job. I mean, that reality challenged woman? She thinks she's Barbie. Wait, what did you say? Close on Gloria's face. What? It's half of the love look. She recognizes her. But although Gloria can see Barbie Margo, Barbie Margo can't see Gloria. As one of the Mattel employees shuts the doors on Barbie's friendly face and looks around all secret agent-like as he gets into the passenger seat and they drive off. Exterior, interior, black van, day. As the van zooms down the highway, a chipper Barbie tries to talk to the men in the car. Of course, Mattel. It was you guys who wanted me to come to the real world because it definitely wasn't that Sasha girl. No one responds. Exterior, giant Mattel headquarters, day. The scary black man pulls up and Barbie steps out, looking up at the giant building. Thanks for the ride. This has been so much fun. She is escorted through the big double doors. Wow. Mothership. Interior Mattel headquarters, lobby. Barbie Margot smiles as she's taken through the lobby and up a glass elevator. And it opens onto the top floor with all the executives. And she opens the door on so much pink. Interior Mattel headquarters, boardroom. Barbie, we're so happy to see you. Can we Can get you anything? Mineral water? Yes, thank you. 
She's handed a glass of mineral water, which she turns and pours all over her open mouth and down her shirt, the lime wedge sticking to her cheek. They all stare at her. <laughs> I'm not used to that having anything in it. The executive's part revealing our CEO, arms outstretched. We've been really anxious to get some quality time with you. Of course. So what can I do to repair the rift in the space-time continuum portal and get my feet back in that one cellulite gone and generally just not turn into weird Barbie? They all look at her blankly. We've been discussing that very topic. If you are agreeable to it, we would love if you could just get into this giant box. A human-sized Barbie box is wheeled out. It has the logo and plastic restraining straps and everything. If you get in that box, you'll go back to Barbie land and everything will be as it was. Barbie thinks for a minute. The executives all impatiently lean forward. It's taking everything for them not to just capture her and put her in the box themselves. You know what? We should probably get Ken first. Ken? You know, Ken. Oh, Ken, the guy, you're right. We cut back to Ken just screaming his lungs out on the rocket going back the other direction. Back to Mattel. <laughs> yeah, Ken isn't something we were worried about ever. Okay, I'll get in the box. Oh, wonderful. Cool. But since I've come all this way here, can I meet the woman in charge, your CEO? They all hesitate. The male Mattel CEO raises his hand. Yeah, that would be me. Well, what about the CFO? But it's another man. Excuse me. The COO? Man. Me here. Goodness gracious. What about the president of the Barbie division? It's another man. President. Um, I'm a man with no power. Does that make me a woman? Oh. <laughs> Are there any women in charge? Listen, I know where you're going with this. And I have to say, I really resent... I really resent it because we are a company literally made of women. There was a woman CEO in the 90s and another one at another time. Women are the freaking foundation of this long phallic building. We have a gender neutral bathrooms up the wazoo. Every single one of these men you see before you loves women. Up the wazoo. I am the son of a mother. I am the mother of a son. I am the nephew of a... Woman aunt, some of my best friends are Jewish. What what I'm trying to say is get in the box, you Jezebel. Everyone gasps. What, I can't say Jezebel now? Barbie Margo seems unfazed, looks at the box. I haven't been in a box in ages. One executive steps into the box and then jumps back out. See, it's easy. Okay. She slowly steps into the box. Totally remember the smell. <laughs> I'm having a, a weird Prestonian flashback. Oh, <laughs> remember Proust Barbie? <laughs> that did not sell well. The employees surround the box somewhat menacingly. A Mattel employee grabs the plastic ties from the holes in the back of the box and pulls. Barbie Margot feels the restraints tighten on her wrist. She hesitates. It's sinking in. She pulls her wrist out quickly, just as the plastic cinches. Then she jumps out of the box. <laughs> you know what? Before I get in the box, can I just make sure my hair is perfect? It really is time to get in the box. I want to look factory beautiful. <sighs> okay. Let's hurry it up. She backs over towards the bathroom and then zigs towards the double doors of the conference room. Then she bolts. Get that box! 
interior Mattel cubicles continuous. A big chase through the main bullpen offices of Mattel. The CEO and all the executives hurry after her. It's like a giant maze. Barbie Margot darts around the cubicles as employees work. People pass from cubicle to cubicle, popping up and looking around, trying to spot her. It's quicker if we go over the cubicles like the Matrix. The CEO tries to scramble slash climb badly over the top of the cubicle and topples into an employee and a computer console. Barbie sprints towards giant double doors on the other side of the room. The Mattel executives in hot pursuit. She hurries through the doors and shoves a broom through the handles to hold them off. Barbie enters a big hallway with lots of doors. She tries every one, but they're all locked, trapped, panicked. She hears the executives getting closer. Then one door opens. Interior magical room from the 1950s, eternity. She enters the room and shuts the door behind her. Oh, hello, come in. Barbie Margo sees a woman dressed like a mom in the 1950s. The room we see resembles a 1950s kitchen. She's working on something. Her sewing machine is out and there are scraps of paper and cloth all over the kitchen table. Don't worry, you're safe here. What is this place? <laughs> I always find that I think it best at kitchen tables. Tea? Yes, please. The woman hands her the cup, which Barbie Margot brings to her lips, then hesitates. A little dribbles down her chin, but she's able to drink it, too. She smiles, proud of herself. She feels strangely comfortable here. So a woman does work here. No, sweetie. We do more than work here. The real world isn't what I thought it was. It never is. Isn't that marvelous? There is a moment that passes between them. Barbie Margot feels the woman's gaze. What is it that I don't know how to drink tea? No. You look different. Not what I used to be. I used to be perfect. I don't know. I think you're just right. She settles down at her sewing machine and resumes her work. Who, who are you? We hear the executives in the hallway yelling, trying doorknobs. Barbie Margot tenses. Without looking up, the older woman indicates a closet next to the refrigerator. If you go through that closet, you'll find a stairwell down to the lobby. Just be careful of the mops and brooms. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Ruth. You're welcome, Barbie. Barbie Margot hesitates, then enters the cupboard. She pushes through the mops and brooms. The cupboard extends beyond, and Barbie Margot finds herself in a narrow back stairwell. Interior lobby slash exterior street. Barbie Margot scampers across the lobby and onto the busy street. She looks around desperately. She glances back through the glass windows. Mattel executives sliding across the shiny, slippery lobby floor. Barbie freezes, panicked. Gloria's car pulls up, door opening. Get in. Barbie Margot then sees Gloria. Time slows down. It's the love look completed. They see each other seeing each other. Just then, the Mattel executives come running out of the building. Now, get in now. Barbie Margot leaps into the back seat. The door slams shut and the car screeches off. Town cars and vans pull up. The executives scramble inside. <laughs> Interior Gloria's car. Gloria drives, making crazy turns. She's an incredible driver. Sasha in the passenger seat. Everyone is screaming. God, I hope nobody from school saw us put a life-size Barbie in our car. How did this even happen? Mattel gains on them. Gloria does some crazy, amazing driving. I don't know. Were you here? You're like... An idea. A great idea. So I've been a little lonely lately and I found the Barbie, the Barbies we used to play with. I thought we gave those away. I started playing and making drawings like we used to do together because I thought it would be fun and joyful. But it wasn't, was it? No, because I started feeling sad and weird and then the drawings got sad and weird. And maybe because I couldn't be like you, I ended up making you like me. Did any of these drawings by chance have thoughts of death and cellulite? 
Yes, irrepressible thoughts of death, Barbie. Oh my God. The cellulite. I came for you. Me. What? Those were your memories. Cut back to earlier images of mother and daughter, but this time we see Gloria's experience, the joy of participating in Sasha's childhood and the pain of Sasha inevitably moving away as she grows up back to the car. What, are you two like shining? No, it's nothing like that. Are you shining with a real Barbie? No, well, I mean, kind of, yes. Gloria makes a crazy screeching turn. This should feel like the chase in Bullet. I don't even know where to start with this wishing a Barbie to life crap. Listen, I'm just a boring mom with a boring job and a daughter who hates me. Can you blame me for wanting a little fun? Gloria checks the rearview mirror. The Mattel car is flanking. I'm going to have to lose these chuckleheads. She makes another crazy turn. Clearly, Gloria is not boring. Mom! Everyone slides over. Barbie Margot falling. Gloria writes the car. Barbie Margot climbs back up. Her hair a mess. I think I owe you ladies an apology. I thought Barbie had made a real, the real world better, but the real world is forever and irrevocably messed up. Well, the real world isn't perfect, but you inspired me. But I love women. I want to help women. Oh, come off it. Everybody hates women. Women hate women and men hate women. It's the thing we can all agree on. Is that true? It's complicated. Hate is a strong word. Wake up, Mom. Two cars appear on either side. The Mattel executives yelling, but we can't hear anything they're saying through their tinted windows. I'm wide awake, Sasha. Gloria turns the wheel, smashing into the side of a median strip, sending them skidding. Mom, where did you learn to drive like this? There was this guy. Was it Dad? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was Dad. Gloria does a crazy reverse Tokyo drift thing right into a hidden alley. Everyone quiets as the Mattel vans drive by, not seeing them. Can't hold them off forever. Wait! I have an idea. Can you get us to Venice Beach? Exterior Venice Beach 20 minutes later. They rollerblade frantically. Where are we going? Barbie land. We'll be safe there. What? Mom, are you really going to let Barbie take you and your tween daughter to an imaginary land? Yes, and you know why? Because I never get to do anything. I didn't even go to go on the cruise I won at your school raffle because I didn't have enough vacation days and your dad is allergic to sun. What about dad? We can't just leave him. Be fine. Cut to nerdy, well-meaning dad in sandals and socks learning Spanish from an app. Uh, polygrafos. Muy bien. Back <laughs> to our group. Yeah, he'll be fine. Ready for fun? Here we go. Transportation montage. And we replay some of the various vehicles. First is snowmobile, cute winter wear. Where are we? How did we get into these clothes? How did you get into this vehicle? When I was a kid, I lost these boots and my mom wouldn't let me buy a whole new Barbie just to replace the boots. They look so good on you. Thank you. Sasha does an eye roll. Camper, they're all chilling in lawn chairs. She was always my favorite Barbie. And you are my favorite human. Tandem bike. It's now a three-seater. Don't tell him, but I never got a Ken. <laughs> That's because Ken is totally superfluous. They all crack up. Barbie, Margo, and Gloria are real pals. Rocket. Women hold all major positions of power, control all the money, basically do everything men do in your world, women do in ours. I mean, that sounds kind of cool. Boat. Sasha is laughing as they take the waves in the speedboat. The experience, as bizarre as it is, can't help but delight her. Sasha then regards her mother regarding her. Look, dolphins. Exterior Barbie land, Barbie car, day. Barbie, Gloria, and Sasha cruise in the Barbie car. Indigo girls closer to fine playing on the radio, as always. I went to the doctor. I went to the mountain. 
what is this song? And we have a female president. And it's fun and work and friendship and female 24 seven. Do giant hands come in and play with you? What? No, that's crazy. Cut back to Venice Beach, real world. Mattel executives talk to locals on the boardwalk who tell them what they saw earlier. A blonde, a brunette, and a tween rollerbladed in that direction. So the first step is always rollerblading. Excuse me, sir? They've gone to Barbie land. Oh, no. And she brought humans there with her. This could mean extremely weird things for our world. Like what? Like nothing any of our collective imaginations could ever dream up. Aaron Dinkins looks peculiar trying to imagine. A podcast hosted by two wise trees or a choir of 2,000 young fathers. Not even close. We've got to get to Barbie land. Go, find some place. Just pick a direction and run. They scatter. Exterior Barbie land day. Gloria and Sasha are totally impressed by the beauty of Barbie land as they drive by the ocean in Barbie's convertible. I can feel my heels lifting already. Yes, this is what I was supposed to do. Bring you back here. Feels right. It does. They pass the beach. Hens are playing volleyball a la Top Gun and the Barbies are cheering. Reverse of beginning. That's Strange. Also, Ken's race on the beach and hug triumphantly in the surf, a la Rocky Three. Barbie Issa hands a can of beer. Incoming brewski beer. Uh, so that's our president with the beer and the cheering squad. Is the Supreme Court? This is so much better than being president. Something's weird today. A Ken mermaid leaps out of the surf and waves. You don't think that's a thing? Check this out. Hi, Barbie. Oh, my God. oh okay. I can. Barbie mermaid emerges and hands the Ken mermaid a beer. Here, have a brewski beer. My big guy is thirsty. Huh? Okay, uh, wait until you see my dream house. Everything I've bought and owned will totally inspire you. We'll change clothes again. They pass the Capitol. And that's the Capitol. It's pink. And finally they pass Barbie Mount Rushmore. But now instead of Barbies, it's horses. Huh? Exterior Barbie Margot's dream house. They drive through the neighborhood. And these are the dream houses this is where I live. As they arrive in the cul-de-sac, Gloria exclaims, And see through the houses. So each Barbie has their own house. Where do the Kens stay? I don't know. I had the tree house. I saved up my allowance to buy it. A Ken sits on the swing and waves to them. Barbie cocks her head. Strange. They pass a giant Hummer with flames. I've never seen a car like that before. What happened here? She finally takes in the full transformation. There are mini fridges everywhere. That poster of dogs playing poker, video games, big TVs playing horse footage, Doritos, mini basketball hoops and arcade games, chin-up bars in the doorways, foosball, pool, ping pong, air hockey. It's all kin all the time. Empowered through some strange game of telephone with the real world. Some of them have beards, some mustaches, a couple have goatees. Every Ken is there, including Ken Simu. This embrace of a real world cartoon masculinity seems to have united them. And now bearded Ken Ryan Gosling sporting a mink coat is in the middle of a monologue. All the Kens listen, rapt. At first I thought the real world was run by men. And then for one minute I thought it was run by horses. But now I realize that horses are just men extenders. So are cars, buildings, airplanes, everything. Everything exists just to expand and elevate the presence of men. That's amazing. Ken, 
What have you done? What are you wearing? Ken's turn to see Barbie, Margot, Gloria, and Sasha. Ken Ryan Gosling is secretly thrilled she showed up. He'd been wanting her to see what he was capable of. He tries to cover with nonchalance. Don't question it. Just roll with it, tiny baby. Don't call me baby. He's hurt. But instead of admitting it, now he's going to go full out aggressive and posturing. Okay, what about mini baby like this mini fridge? Ken Ryan Gosling opens the door to his mini fridge and grabs a beer. Laughter from the Kens. Alan sits with the Kens on a leather couch and looks miserable. This is my dream house. It's no longer Barbie's dream house. This shall henceforth be known as Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House. You don't have to say dojo and house. And casa. But you do. It feels good. Try it. Mojo Dojo Casa House. Gloria and Sasha begin to repeat it back to Ken Ryan Gosling. Barbie Margot shushes them to stop as Ken laughs maniacally. <laughs> Exterior... <laughs> Like that. Interior Mattel Shipping Warehouse, real world day. People loading Ken Mojo Dojo Casa houses onto forklifts. Get me straight. How weird is it? These Mojo Dojo Casa houses are literally flying off the shelves. The kids are clamoring for them. Ken is on t-shirts, mugs. It's the number one tattoo. Warner Bros, or Warner Brothers, has started auditions for the Ken movie, which is, has already a blockbuster hit. Exterior Venice Beach, real world day. All the Mattel execs are rollerblading, the CEO reacting to the news on his phone. It's happening! That thing we could have never imagined if we don't have my words, lady... Executive assistant. Executive words, lady, and someone who is probably your daughter back here and close the portal. Our world could be altered forever. Ah, but what does it matter if it's Barbie or Ken? The money is pouring in. Shame on you, executive number two! Do you think I spent my entire life in boardrooms because of a bottom line? They all look away, not wanting to answer this. No! I got into the business because of little girls and their dreams in the least creepy way possible! Play faster! Time is running out! Exterior Barbie Margot's dream house. Ken Ryan Gosling swings a golf club through some plastic flowers in the yard. Barbie Margot reacts. Look, I'm just hanging down with my bro homies having a brewski beer in my Mojo Dojo Casa house. You can stay here if you want as my bride wife or my long-term low-commitment distance girlfriend. Now, brewski beer me. I will not brewski beer you. That's fine. I mean, without you Barbies running things, we can do our hair however we like. We see Kens with crazy patches of beard on their faces. I have hats. Barbie Emma enters in a French maid outfit. Barbie Harley in a naughty schoolgirl outfit. How are my hungry boys who want snacks? Barbie, I'm so glad to see you. Can you believe what's happening? I know. Isn't it great? Does anyone need a brewski beer? What are you doing? You're a doctor. Being a doctor was stressful and a lot of work. I'm happy being helpful decoration. And, oh. and Alan likes likes to help me give the Kens foot massages. No, 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 I don't. I, I, I don't like that. Alan <laughs> looks totally freaked out by what's happening. Barbie Sharon and Barbie Anna sit on a leather couch rubbing a Ken's feet. We do. I'm so blotto face day drunk. Ken's cheer in agreement. I did know. Same, same that. I like not having to make any decisions. It's like a spa day for my brain forever. What's wrong with her? Nothing. We just explained the impeccable, immaculate, seamless garment of logic that is patriarchy, and she crumbled. Oh my 
God, it's like in the 1500s with the indigenous people and the smallpox. They had no defenses against it. Yeah! Ken Ryan Gosling climbs up onto the roof of his Hummer. Buckle up, babe. Because Barbie Land is now Ken Land, and it'll be just like Century City in Los Angeles. Because they have it figured out in Century City. The minute you get out of your car, you're like, I can't believe how great this place is! Ken Simu nods vigorously. He loves it. No, they don't. They don't have it figured out in Century City because we failed them. With sudden personal intensity, almost crying, based on a lifetime of feeling like a second-class citizen. You failed me. After I was somebody, I walked down the street and people respected me for who I am. One lady even asked me for the time. No way. Way. Except for those dumb technicalities like MBAs and medical degrees and, I don't know, swim lessons. I could have ruled that world. He attempts to slide down the hood of the Hummer, but his mink sticks to the metal and he moves at a glacial pace, finally landing on the ground. But here, I don't need any of those things. Here, I'm just a dude. And that is enough. He raises a remote with a sense of triumph and switches the channel on giant gross TV that has, until this point, been playing romantic horse footage. It's been such an exciting day. Exterior capital steps on the TV day. A newswoman, Barbie Ritu, interviews Ken Scott. It sure has. And please, call me Mr. Ken President Prime Minister, man. Let's recap all the amazing changes and innovations thanks to the Kens. Cut to theater. Nobel Prize ceremony. All the contestants are Kens and all the judges are Ken. The Nobel Prize in horses goes to Ken. It's Ken Ryan Gosling. He winks as he accepts his prize. Interior Barbie, scratch that, Ken, Oval Office, day. Ken Scott, who is president, signs a bill into law with all of the Ken senators standing around him. Interior Supreme Court, day. Ken Kingsley argues in front of the, Ke the Ken Supreme Court. The gallery erupts into rapturous applause. Exterior Pink House, day. And now you're making all of this permanent with a special election to change the Constitution. That's right. In 48 hours, all the Kens will go to the polls to vote to change the Constitution to a government for the Kens, of the Kens, and by the Kens. Exterior Mojo Dojo Casa House, same. Ken Ryan Gosling turns triumphantly to Barbie Margot, but also kind of wanting her approval. You can't do this. This is Barbie land. The Barbies worked hard and dreamed hard to make it everything it is. You can't just undo it in a day <laughs> literally and figuratively watch me now if you'll excuse me this is my mojo dojo mojo dojo casa house not barbie's mojo dojo casa house right barbie margo looks devastated see how it feels it's not fun is it it's boys, it's boys night. Night. a catch in his throat this almost hurts him to say Every night is boys' night. Ken Ryan Gosling feels for her, but then puts on sunglasses to hide his emotion. Then he puts sunglasses on top of his sunglasses and walks away, cold as ice. Exterior cul-de-sac day. Barbie Margo runs from the house screaming. Gloria and Sasha follow. As she reaches the lawn, clothes and accessories come raining down. Ken is tossing all her stuff off the third floor. Take your lady fashions with you! He identifies each clothing set as it flies through the air. Take your celebrate disco bell bottoms. Take your ice capades, pretty practice suit and dazzling show skirt. Gloria surreptitiously picks up a few great pieces. These are archival. Your pajama jam and Amsterdam set and your pretty paisley palazzo pants and get out. He is angry, but he still loves all the clothes and obsessively calls them by their proper names, of course. Ken Ryan Gosling collapses in a pool of emotion. Barbie Margo runs crying. Gloria and Sasha follow. Gloria tries to comfort her. Barbie Margo turns on Gloria, angry. Why did you wish me to your messed up world using your complicated human thoughts and feelings? 
Barbieland was perfect before. And I was perfect before. I'm so sorry. I wasn't trying to do anything wrong. Sasha steps in, defending Gloria, who's touched. Don't apologize. Don't blame my mom. Maybe you wished us. Maybe it's your fault, Barbie. I didn't wish anything. I've never wanted anything to change. Well, honey, that's life. It's all change. Well, that's just terrifying. I don't want that. Not my life. I'm just gonna sit here and wait and hope that one of the more leadership-oriented Barbies snaps out of it and does something about this whole mess. Barbie Margot drops listlessly into a sitting position, tips over, and lies flat like a doll. I really understand this feeling. It's basically like being a human person all the time. Just leave me here. Go back to your messed up world and leave me to mine. You're just going to give up? I almost felt bad for you, but you're exactly what I thought you were. Come on, honey. Let's go. How do we even... Do everything we did in reverse. Gloria and Sasha walk away. She doesn't deserve you. Barbie Margot is now actually face down on the lawn. This is the lowest I've ever been. Emotionally and physically. Cut to a commercial on TV. It's all bright and happy, except for the dolls are really going through it. They look wrecked and sad. Hey, kids, it's time to run out and get new Depression Barbie. She wears sweatpants all day and night. She spends seven hours, uh, she spent seven hours today on Instagram looking at her estranged best friend's engagement photos while eating a family-sized bag of Starbursts. And now her jaw is killing her and she's going to watch the BBC's Pride and Prejudice for the seventh time until she falls asleep. Anxiety, panic attacks, and OCD sold separately. Exterior Barbie, no, Kenland Street, day. Weird Barbie patrols in a vehicle version of her house, constructed from abandoned Barbie cars. It's kind of like a tank, very road warrior. It rumbles past a Ken taking down Barbie Way and putting up a Ken Avenue Boulevard Road Muse sign. They screech to a halt beside a catatonic Barbie Margot. Got a live one here. Earring Magic Ken and Barbie Video Girl pick Barbie Margot up. From Barbie Margot's point of view, we see Weird Barbie. I'm like you now, ugly and unwanted. Thanks, kid. Barbie Margot is lifted into the amazing cockeyed vehicle. Exterior transportation montage, tandem bike. With the CEO at the front and Aaron Dick and Dinkins in the back, Mattel rides a 12 person tandem bike on their journey to Barbie land. Isn't this great? Wait till you see the boat! Interior slash exterior Barbie car, open road. Gloria and Sasha are driving down the Barbie highway in Barbie's car. Gloria and Sasha, three exclamation marks, sing at the top of their lungs to the Indigo Girls. I went, I went to the doctor. doctor. I, I went, went to the mountains. mountains. I looked, I looked to the children. I drank, I drank from the fountains. Sasha looks almost wistfully at the retreating landscape of Barbie Land. Suddenly, the song on the radio is cut out by a needle scratch. Gloria frowns. A Ken comes over the airwaves. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you our new radio station, KKEN 107.5, playing Ken's favorite song over and over again. And then suddenly, Matchbox 20's push erupts from the speakers. Alan pops up in the back seat. Turn this song off for Christ's sake. Gloria and yeah. Sasha scream their heads off and Alan screams that they're screaming. So much screaming. They skid off the road, crashing down a hill, flipping over a few times and landing upright on another road. Same shot as the first time. Except for this time, the car lands with no one in it. And one second later, right beside the car, in the same configuration, land Gloria, Sasha, and Alan. I want to push you around. Well, I will. Well, I will. Still hysterical, getting to their feet. Who are you? I'm Alan. You are Alan. That's great. No, no, don't tell the Kens. I'm trying to escape. I, I, 
cannot sit on one more leather couch. It's going to break my spirit. <laughs> Up ahead, the Kins are building a wall. It's partially constructed, and hard hat Kins hammer and dig. Once they figured out how to build that wall sideways and not just up, no one will be able to get in or out. It's true. They're building the wall straight up, not across. If we want to leave, we better make a run for it. Alan, you can't go. Having a Barbie in the real world is what caused, caused all these problems in the first place. Not one person would care if Alan was in the real world. In fact, it's happened before. All of... And in sync, in sync, in sync. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that band. Alan, off their looks. Yes, even him. So come on. Hey, you there. Alan casually stands and walks towards the Kens. Just get in the car and keep it singing. Be ready for anything. Hey, man. Who are you? I'm Alan. I'm Ken's buddy. All his clothes fit me. Alan charges at the Kens and takes them all on rather impressively. Gloria and Sasha scramble to the car. Sasha lands in the driver's seat and revs. You don't have a driver's license. And this car doesn't have an engine. Sasha looks beyond the wall and back to the real world. And then in the other direction, back to Barbie land. What are you doing? Let's go. Sasha looks at Gloria and then inspired. We have to go back. Barbie Lynn needs saving. Barbie needs saving. But you hate Barbie. But you don't. You've always believed in what she could be. Well, I was wrong. Barbie gave up. The Ken's won. Mom, you have to try. Even if you can't make it perfect, you can make it better. I can't make anything better. I'm the one who ruined Barbie Land with my stupid drawings in the first place. They're not stupid. They're amazing. You like my drawings? They're weird and dark and crazy. Everything you pretend not to be. I am. I am weird and dark and crazy. Alan punches the last can and takes a threatening step towards the remaining beleaguered cans. You want some more, Alan? And he turns and runs back to the car. We have to get out of here right now. Gloria hesitates. Shut up, Alan. We're going back. Let's go help my doll. Gloria and Sasha beam at each other. Sasha steps on the gas, turns the wheel, and they swing back towards Barbie land. I'll never get out of here. Where can we find Barbie? <laughs> There's only one place she'd be. Interior Weird Barbie's Weird House Day. Barbie Margot has joined Weird Barbie and her motley crew. The Reject Barbies, Earring Magic Ken, Sugar Daddy Ken, Growing Up Skipper. Her boobs grow when she lifts her arm. Teen Talk Barbie, Tanner the Pooping Dog, Video Girl Barbie. Barbie Margo is lying on the floor, unable to do anything, totally without any will to live. Teen Talk Barbie and Video Girl Barbie attempt to unbrainwash Barbie Alexandra. You're a writer. This is your Nobel Prize, remember? Oh Barbie Alexandra goes into one of those acceptance speeches women give, totally self-effacing and not embracing the win. Oh my God. I don't even know how I got here. I don't deserve this. I'd like to thank Ken. It's pointless trying any programmer. I've already tried. The fork in my soup is this, Barb. Why didn't the brainwashing work on you? My exposure to patriarchy in the real world made me immune. Either you're brainwashed or you're weird and ugly. There is no in-between. Say it, sister. Get ready to live in the shadows and on the margins because in 48 hours, Barbie Land becomes Ken Land. They hear voices. Everyone screams and then tries to hide badly, except for Barbie Margo, who doesn't move. Other Barbies step over her. Some try to freeze like statues. It's the Kens! They found us! The sound of footsteps grow louder until finally Gloria, Sasha, and Alan are standing there. Kens! And Alan! <laughs> the the lights go on, and they all emerge out of their random hiding places. Barbie Margot half clocks Gloria and Sasha and tries to pull herself away out of their sight. Welcome, welcome to my weird house. I'm weird Barbie. I'm in splits. I have funky hair, and I smell like basement. Oh my god, I had a weird Barbie. Yeah, you did. You make them weird by playing with them too hard. 
Again, we take in the group as Gloria identifies each one. That's Sugar Daddy Ken and Earring Magic Ken. Mattel discontinued them. Sugar Daddy Ken? What the fuck? No, no. I'm not a Sugar Daddy. This is Sugar. And I'm her daddy. I have an earring. A magic earring. Yeah, those were actual Kens. And more discontinued Barbies. Growing up Skipper, may I? Watch this. Gloria lifts growing up Skipper's arm and her boobs inflate. This is as weird as it sounds. See? Her boobs grow. Why would they do that? Gloria continues down the line of discontinued Barbies. And Barbie Video Girl? I have a TV in my bag. You know whose dream it is? Nobody. It's nobody's dream. And that's Barbie Barbie, of course. She's not dead. She's just having an existential crisis. Gloria and Sasha walk over to Barbie Margot, who hasn't gotten very far. She just presses her face to the ground. Gloria turns her over. Barbie Margot hides her face with her hands. Gloria gently moves them away. And there is unadorned Barbie Margot. No makeup, nothing special, just her, which we know is insanely beautiful, don't worry. Barbie Margot totally falls apart weeping like a toddler crying. What's wrong? I'm not pretty anymore. What? You are so pretty. Not stereotypical Barbie pretty. Note to the filmmakers. You should have cast Margot Robbie if you wanted, you should not, uh, never cast Margot Robbie if you wanted to make this point. You are beautiful. Not just that. I'm not smart enough to be interesting. But you are smart. I can't do brain surgery. I've never flown a plane. I'm not president. No one on the Supreme Court is me. I'm just not good enough for anything. She sobs bitterly. Gloria shakes her head, feels deeply. It is literally impossible to be a woman. You are so beautiful and so smart. It kills me that you don't think you're good enough. Like we always have to be extraordinary and somehow we're always doing it wrong. You're supposed to be thin, but not too thin. You can never say what you want. To be thin, you have to say you want to be healthy, but you also have to be thin. You have to have money, but you can't ask for money because that's crass. You have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. You're supposed to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. You're supposed to love being a mother, but don't talk about your kids all the damn time. You're supposed to be a career woman, but always looking out for other people. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane. But if you point that out, then you're accused of complaining. You're supposed to be pretty for men, but not so pretty that you tempt them too much or threaten other women. Women. You're supposed to be part of the sisterhood, but also stand out, but always be grateful. You have to never get old, never be rude, never show off, never be selfish, never fall down, never show fear, never fall out of line. It, it's too hard. It's too contradictory. No one says thank you or gives you a medal. And not only that, you're doing it all wrong and that everything is your fault. I'm just so damn tired of watching myself and every single other women tie ourselves in knots so that people will like us. And if that is all true for a doll, just represent a woman then i don't even know <sighs> exhausted she sits down alan is in tears they all are maybe a slow clap and then wait i did write a book it was like i was in some dream where i was somehow really invested in Zack snyder's cut of justice league But what you just said, it broke me out of it. Really? Back, you're back. Sasha looks at her mom like she's seeing her for the first time. She's proud. Barbie Margot stands up and we move in on her pure tear streaked face. By giving voice to the cognitive dissonance required to be the woman under the patriarchy, you robbed it of its power. Gloria, Sasha and everyone else turns to Barbie Margot. 
Whoa. I just said all that. Hell yes. White savior, Barbie. No. It was your mom. She did the saving. Sasha fist bumps her. Barbie Margo is amazed. She suddenly has new authority. A deeper voice from a place of real knowing. Like Olivia de Havilland at the end of the Harris. Now go watch that movie. We have to stop the Kens. You've got to say those things to all the other Barbies. That's the key. How will we get them away from their Kens? We have experience with a world like this one. Do you have a map of Barbie land? What do you think? A large 3D map of Barbie land opens up like a Murphy bed from the wall. Cut to heist montage. We see the execution of the plan as Barbie, Margot, Gloria, and Sasha lay out the details. You know that thing you've seen in every heist movie ever. Here's the deal. It's not about how they see us. It's about how they see themselves. Kenland contains the seeds of its own destruction. First, we have to get the Barbies away from their Kens. We can use a decoy Barbie who pretends to be brainwashed. That should be you. We'll distract them by pretending to be helpless and confused. Kins can't resist a damsel in distress. You have to make them believe that you're complacent and that they have the power. And when their guard is down, you can take the power back. Cut to the Barbie busy town street. The heist Barbies pile out of Weird Barbie's tank car. Barbie Alexandra sits in a cafe on her laptop. She nods to the heist Barbies as Ken Simu strolls by with Barbie Issa. The influence that Porsche 356 has had on the motoring world as a whole cannot be overstated. The 356? They're gonna be so ignorant. Ah, uh, Photoshop is so hard. I just don't understand how to use the select tool. Ken Simu immediately leaves Barbie East's side for Barbie Alexandra. Oh, honey. You can only use the select tool if the layer is highlighted. Here, let me show you. He wraps his arms around her to use her keyboard. Oh, my tiny head is just swimming mm. with technical jargon like color bands and magnetic lassos. Once they're engaged, we'll spirit away their Barbie and deprogrammer. We see Barbie Margo and Alan hurrying Barbie Issa away from the scene. She's thrown into the weird Barbie tank car and Gloria deprograms her. You're supposed to be their mommies, but not remind them of their mommy. Any power you have must be masked under a giggle. This snaps Barbie East out of her stupor. What happened? One day I was president and the next thing I know, I was cutting a kin steak for him. Welcome back, Madam President. And then we'll recruit the now unbrainwashed Barbies to our cause. They can be the new decoys. Intercut the plan. The Barbies distract the Kens by pretending to be helpless and then Gloria deprograms them. Tell him you've never seen The Godfather. You'd love him to explain it to you. In a Ken Mojo Dojo Casa house, Ken Kingsley sits with Barbie Sharon in front of one of the giant TVs talking over the movie. Are you watching... The Godfather? It's The Godfather. Oh, I've never seen it. The now de-brainwashed Barbara Issa sits beside him, feigning total interest. Oh my god, you've never seen The Godfather? The movie is a rich blend of Coppola's aesthetic genius and a triumph of Robert Evans and the architecture of the 70s studio system. She nods and smiles, and while he's busy blathering on about the movie, Barbie Margot and Weird Barbie gently kidnap Barbie Sharon and lead her to Gloria, who does another version of her speech. You have to reject men's advances without damaging their egos, because if you say yes to them, you're a tramp, and you say no to them, you're a prude. Barbie Sharon blinks, awakened. I don't want to touch a foot. No, you don't. Be confused about money. Now it's Barbie Sharon helping. She sits with a bunch of financial documents. Oh, I just have all my money in a savings account? Oh, that's totally wrong. You need treasury bonds, corporate bonds, CDs. No one has CDs anymore. Oh, oh, sweetheart, you're just so cute when you're confused. 
But no, not music CDs. CD stands for Certificate of Deposit, which is issued by the bank to... They steal away his Barbie, Barbie Emma in her maid outfit and deprogrammer. What am I wearing? And now Barbie Emma browses through albums while Ken Nakuti puts on a record with Barbie Anna by his side. I know what I like, but I don't know albums. Oh my God, you never heard of Pavement? It's got a pretty cover. Stephen Malcolm has really harnessed the acerbic talk singing of Lou Reed with post-punk influences such as Wire in the Fall. And then there are some classics of the trade. Barbie Anna pretends she's drowning by just lying down by the side of the ocean. A Ken leans down to rescue her. You might have to give me mouth to mouth. And again, the liberated Barbies steal away Barbie Hari. Gloria ranting, Barbie Hari snapping out of it. Then she executes the classic glasses gag. Gee, I'm so awkward. I don't feel pretty at all. And, and will anyone ever like me? May I? He takes off his glasses for her. There. Now I can see your pretty face. And then there's pretending to be terrible at every sport ever. Cut to helpful sports montage. Barbie Sharon pretends to not be able to hit a golf ball. Ken Scott approaches, wraps his arms around her. Here, let me show you. Barbie Alexandra tennis swing. Ken Kingsley arms, arm wrap. Here, let me show you. Barbie Hari baseball swing. Ken Simu arm wrap. Here, let me show you. Barbiana pulls the arrow back. Ken Nakuti arm wrap. Here, let me show you. All the Kens at once, maybe in a team photo type thing. Here, here, here let, let us, us show, show you. you. We'll do this until every single Barbie is deprogrammed and ready mm -hmm. to take back Barbie land. Interior Weird Barbie's Weird House. The place is now bustling with Barbies who are back to themselves. It's alive with chatter and planning. Weird Barbie does a taxi whistle to get their attention. Tomorrow, the Kens are going to vote to change the Constitution, but we have to get there first. The final stage of our plan, to turn the Kens against each other. Now that they think they have power over you, you make them question whether they have enough power over each other. Close on Barbie Margot. A hand applies makeup to her face. It's Gloria. What if this doesn't work? What if he doesn't like me anymore? He likes you. He was really upset because he likes you and deep down he knows you don't feel the same way i still don't want to hurt him he took your house he brainwashed your friends he wants to control the government okay true right it's like i'm a woman already welcome is this what it's really like they share a rueful smile as gloria finishes Barbie Mar Margo walks into the room of Barbies. They all smile at her. She's stereotypical Barbie perfect again. I'm ready. Here we go. Exterior Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House. Barbie rings the bell. Ken Ryan Gosling sees her, pretends he doesn't, noisily prepares himself, and then fakes being shocked to see her. It's a lot. Oh, hey. Got me reading. Hey, I've been thinking. Uh huh. Ken Land is. Kendom. Kendom. Kendom Land. Land of. The free and the men. Right. Well, this place. Uh huh. Is really great. I've never seen the Barbie so happy. Done a good, great job cheering. Yeah. And the Kens really are better at ruling than the Barbies are. And we just took patriarchy and made a patriarchy. Right. And and I'm ready to be your long-term, distant, low-commitment, casual girlfriend if you'll still have me. You just hold on for a second. Ken Ryan Gosling retreats into his house and out of view. Sublime! Returning to Barbie. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. Please. 
Fine. Come inside and I can play the guitar at you. Yay. She hops inside. Interior Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House. Ken Ryan Gosling plays guitar on the couch while staring at Barbie Margot, who listens patiently. I want to push you down. Well, I will. Well, I will. Exterior Barbie Land Beach night. Four hours later and he's still going. Now on the dunes. It's a beach party with all the Kens and their Barbies. All the Barbies pretend to be brainwashed and all the Kens play guitar at them. Yes, it's like 20 guitars and one drum set. I want to push, push, you, push you, down. you down. Well, well I, will. I will. Well, I will. Well, I will. This is the final stage of our plan. Give them their dream come true. <clears throat> and at the peak of their happiness, when they think you actually care about this song, you take it all away. Margot looks across to Barbie Alexandra, who nods. It's time. Then Barbie Margot looks at her phone and giggles. Who? <laughs> Were you texting? Huh? Who are you texting? Anyone who asks that question twice has already lost all power. No one. He snatches the phone. Ken! Sorry. One sec. We follow Barbie Margot and move throughout the Barbie Ken couples at the party, all playing their guitars at their Barbies. Barbie Margot approaches Ken Simu, who also plays guitar and sings Matchbox 20 at Barbie Alexandra. That's a beautiful song you're playing. Did you write it? Yes. <laughs> Want to sit here and watch me do it while staring into your eyes uncomfortably for four and a half minutes? I'd love to. Ken Ryan Gosling observes this. Enraged, he smashes his guitar into the sand, but it doesn't break. And now the other Barbies do similar things, walking across the sand from their Kens to engage with opposing Kens. You play on their egos and their petty jeal jealousness, and you turn them against each other. While they're fighting, we take back Barbie land. The Kens look at each other suspiciously. No Ken can be trusted. Exterior slash interior Ken's Mojo Dojo Casa House is called a sack later. Ken Ryan Gosling, Ken Kingsley, and Ken Shuti sit on the edges of their houses with their feet dangling. Because the houses are open to the world, they can all see and talk to each other. It's all very kid-like. Does the title of long-term distance, low-commitment, casual girlfriend mean nothing? This has gone too far! What do we do? We beat every individual one of them off. No. We go to war. Against the Barbies? Against the Kens. But we are the Kens. The other Kens. Well, we should probably call them something else so it doesn't get confusing. Nah, we'll know what we mean. Well, we're on the battlefield and you say Ken at four o'clock. I won't know if you mean us Kens or the other Kens. Because, my dudes, we attack at 10 o'clock to take advantage of the morning waves. But not so early so we all get to sleep in. Right. Well, what will we fight with? We have no guns. Tennis rackets and volleyballs. And slap fights. And beach offs! Interior slash exterior Mojo Dojo Casa House, Don. In his bed, Ken Ryan Gosling is already awake. Doesn't seem to matter what I do. I'm always number two. No matter how hard I tried. Oh, oh I. Then he and the other Kens mink up and walk towards battle. Think the warriors. I have feelings that I can't explain. Driving me insane. All my life been so polite, but I'll sleep alone tonight. The song continues as exterior Barbie land, beach dawn. They come in on paddle boats, Ken Ryan Gosling and Ken Kingsley leading the charge, paddling furiously, trying to look dignified in arm floaties. Cause I'm just Ken, anywhere else I'd be a 10. Is it my destiny to live and die a life of blonde fragility? I'm just Ken, where I see love, she sees a friend. What will it take for her to see the man behind the tan and fight for me? The other Kens, led by Ken Simu, are waiting on the dunes mounted on hobby horses. 
I'll see you on the Malibu beach. Charge. As they rush the beach in their trunks, they're also hitting volleyballs and making sandcastles. Maybe a game of Kadima. The water is cold. Slow-mo sand being kicked in Ken's faces. Ken Ryan Gosling steps off the paddle boat and onto the beach, ready for battle. Ken Ryan Gosling takes an arrow as Ken Simu fights towards him. Exterior roof of Weird Barbie's morning. All the Barbies, Barbie Margo, Weird Barbie, Gloria, Sasha, and the rejected Barbies and Kens look over Barbie land. Exterior roof of Weird Barbie's morning. All the Barbies, uh, and everybody looks over Barbie land. And now they destroy themselves. Can we go restore our constitution? Good idea. Exterior Barbie land, beach, back to the beach. The executives from Mattel in their suits appear amidst the Kens on the beach. This is a real hornet's nest in here. Aaron Dinkins is hit in the head with a volleyball. Ow. Mattel executive number one laughs and then is suddenly and violently shot in the arm in a real saving private Ryan way. Oh. He crumples on the sand. Everyone looks at each other. Did I get shot? Are there real weapons here? No? Exterior Barbie Land Beach, intercut. The Kens continue to do battle with Ken Ryan Gosling singing and fighting his heart out. I want to know what it's like to love to be a real thing. Is it a crime? Am I not hot when I'm in my feelings? And is my moment finally here or am I dreaming? I'm no dreamer. Ken Ryan Gosling and Ken Simu flash chests at each other, the sparkles building and building. This transitions into a dream ballet in a white space. The Kens dance in an expression of frustrated masculinity, helplessness, and feeling. It culminates in Dance Off and Ken Anthem. We are, we are, we are, we are. See, I'm just Ken. Anywhere else I'd be a 10. Is it my destiny to live and die a life of blonde fragility? I'm just Ken. Where I see love, she sees a friend. What will it take for her to see the man behind the tan and fight for me? The Kens stand together. I'm just Ken. And I'm, and I'm enough. enough. And I'm great at doing stuff. So, so hey, hey, check me out. Me out. I'm, I'm just Ken. Ken. My name's Ken. And, and so, so am I. I. Put that manly hand in mine. So, so hey, hey whoa, whoa, check, check me out. out. Yeah, yeah, I'm just Ken. Ken. They all take hands. Baby, oh, ah, nobody, nobody else, else. Nobody, nobody else. else. Ken. Ken. It's beautiful, actually. It's broken by Ken. Ken. We're back on the beach. The Kens hold hands post dream ballet. Ken Ryan Gosling still in the feeling. Ken Kingsley comes running over to him. Ken, what were we supposed to vote today? What? To change the Constitution. That's today, isn't it? Interior Barbie Supreme Court, Barbie slash Kenland Day. We move through the crowd of enthusiastic Barbies. The last time I saw you, you were brainwashed. So were you. You look so much better not in the cheerleader costume and you without the schoolgirl outfit. Barbie Issa bangs the gavel, casually and glamorously commanding. Okay, ladies, let's do this. All of those in favor of letting Barbie Land be Barbie Land, say aye. The Barbies all say aye, voting to aye. retain the Constitution. Sasha grabs her mom's hand. She has a tear running down her cheek. Barbie Margot smiles. That's what she wanted to show them. Exterior Barbie Dreamhouse Day. The Kens and Musical Dance Pack approach the cul-de-sac as if they're riding horses, but they're just galloping on foot, Monty Python style. <laughs> as they arrive, they look up and down and all around to discover that the Barbies, plus Alan and Sasha and Gloria and the rejected dolls, are now occupying all the houses. The whole aesthetic is now a combination of Mojo Dojo Casa House plus Dream House plus Weird House. It's a combo pack. 
which is actually the most beautiful of all. Is it my imagination? Or are these Mojo Dojo Casa houses dreamier? The Barbies all step out into the open. That's because they're dream houses, mother. <laughs> She's censored by a Mattel logo. We've reinserted the Constitution of Barbie Land the way it was meant to be and return all the Barbies' brains and autonomy. All the Barbies cheer. And we seriously disinfected those houses. Yes! They all slowly, tiredly line themselves up. Who are we attacking, sir? The Ken Ryan Gosling looks at the Barbies, triumphant but not confrontational. He hesitates. He looks back at the Kens, who look exhausted and confused. Suddenly, he sees the folly of everything. The other Kens look sheepish as well. They look like the kids at the end of Lord of the Flies when the ship comes. Ken Ryan Gosling starts crying and runs past Barbara Margo into the dream house. Oh, look at me! Which makes Alan cry. Barbie Margo goes into the dream house to comfort him. Ken Ryan Gosling is lying face down on the bed. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Totally. It's okay if you're crying. I cry too. It's kind of amazing. I don't know. I'm a liberated man. I know crying isn't weak. Do you want to sit up for a minute? Uh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry running stuff. I didn't love it. I get it. And those mini fridges are so small. You know, we feel like a six pack in them and the freezer's basically useless. And to be honest, once I found out pay patriarchy isn't about horses, I kind of lost interest anyway. He heaves an ugly cry, snot dripping from his nose. Barbie Margo tries to comfort him, but kind of realizes she should just let this finish on its own. That's okay. I always thought this would be our house. Oh, Ken. I think I owe you an apology. I'm sorry I took you for granted. Not every night had to be girls' night. Ken wipes his tears, nods a thank you. We see that Ken is reflected in Barbie's eye. Ken sees it too. He leans in for a kiss. She backs away. No, I didn't mean to suggest... I don't know who I am without you! You're Ken. But it's Barbie and Ken! There is no just Ken! That's why I was created. I only exist within the warmth of your gaze. Without you, I was just some blonde guy who can't do flips. Ken Ryan Gosling runs to the edge of the house dramatically. Maybe it's time for you to discover who Ken is. Ken leans in again for the kiss. No. It's yeah, okay. Not yeah, yeah, okay, I got it. Ken is bursting with feeling, leaning over a few more times to try to kiss her, even though he knows that's not the solution. He just tries to accept that he looks crazy. I feel so stupid. I look so stupid. I look stupid. No, you look so cool. Ken, you have to figure out who you are without me. You're not your girlfriend. You're not your house. You're not your mink. Beach? No, not even beach. Maybe all the things you thought made you, you aren't. Really you. Maybe it's Barbie and it's Ken. Ken is me? Yes. Ken is me. And I'm Barbie. Ken is me! The Kens call out from below. And me! And me! Ken Ryan Gosling clutches his mink in his arms as he looks down to Ken Kingsley. And then he tosses it dramatically into the air. I want you to have it. Ken Kingsley dons the faux mink coat. He turns to the crowd. We were only fighting because we didn't know who we were. Ken Ryan Gosling goes down the slide. Ken is me! <laughs> Suddenly there's clapping and weeping. The Mattel CEO exits the treehouse. He is somehow clapping and weeping the hardest. It's 
so he sees Mid standing next to him and screams. I just continued her. <laughs> you know how many times I've just wanted to stand up in a board meeting and say, let's just tickle each other. Let's have a company retreat and just tickle each other. The Mattel execs all join in and tickle their CEO who's giggling like a little kid. Aaron Dinkins tickle turning into a hug. Oh, no, no, Adam, don't hug me. <laughs> But mm, thanks to the Barbies, I too can relieve myself of this heavy existential burden while holding on the very real title of CEO, and we can restore everything in Barbie land to exactly the way it was. But Mr. Mattel, please call me mother. No, thank you. Um, I don't think it should go back just the way it was. No Barbie or Ken should be living in the shadows. Or Alan. Nobody notices he says this. President Barbie approaches Weird Barbie. I'm sorry we called you Weird Barbie behind your back and also to your face. That's okay. I'm owning it now. Would you like a job in my cabinet? May I please have sanitation? It's yours. Gaggle of Kens approach, excited. Madam President, please could the Kens get one Supreme Court justice? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't do that. Maybe a lower circuit court judge ship. We accept, as long as we can wear robes. Well, the Kens have to start somewhere. And one day the Kens will have to as much power and influence in Barbie land as women have in the real world. Sasha pokes at Gloria, prompting her. Okay, stop. I'll do it. Stop. I've got an idea. Tell me your secret dream child. She's not extraordinary she's just she just has a flattering top and wants to get through the day because it's okay to just want to be a mom or to want to be a president or a mom who's president or not a mom who's also not president mattel ceo looks at mattel executive number one who quickly runs the numbers on an ipad that's a terrible idea yeah that's gonna make money oh ordinary barbie i love it okay we're good. Everyone good? Okay. Let's now do the work to restore the portal between our worlds. Everyone cheers. Sasha finds Barbie Margot in the crowd. Barbie Margot claps and looks happy, but something is missing, too. Hey, wait. What about Barbie? What do you mean? Barbie's nod. Yeah, what about Barbie? What, I mean? what does she get? Oh, that's easy. She's in love with Ken. That's not her ending. I'm not in love with Ken. What do you want? I don't know. I'm not really sure where I belong anymore. I don't think I have an ending. That was always the point. I created you so you wouldn't have an ending. Coming towards her on the road, backlit by the sun, is a small, well-dressed woman holding a handbag. Jeez. It's Ruth, the woman from the 50s kitchen in the Mattel offices. Barbie Margot meets her halfway. You're Ruth from Mattel. Then Ruth goes from being some ethereal, godlike figure to a comedian, angelic act dropped. Maybe I am Mattel until the IRS got to me, which is another movie. I Remington stealed it for a while with my husband, but I, I'm the brains of the operation. So you're... Ruth Handler, inventor of Barbie. Her ghost keeps an office on the 17th floor. Whispers and looks amongst the Barbies and Kens. Right. You think the lady who invented Barbie looked like Barbie? I'm from... Not, I'm sorry, I'm five foot nothing grandma with a double mastectomy and a tax evasion issues. Nobody looks like Barbie, except, of course, Barbie. Take a bow, honey. I don't feel like Barbie, though. 
Not anymore. Ruth gestures to Barbie Margot. Walk with me. Barbie takes Ruth's hand. They head down the road. The cul-de-sac of Barbies and Kens and Mattel all do a slow theater wave goodbye. Ken Ryan waves, heartfelt. Thank you, Barbie. Thank you. Origin space, a vast empty space, almost like reflecting sand on a beach, softly illuminated by different changing colors. Tell me your trouble. Is this therapy? No. You're talking to the ghost from the 1950s. Well, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I've always just been stereotypical Barbie. I don't think I'm good at anything else. You saved Barbie Land from the patriarchy. That was very much a group effort. And you helped a mother, mother and daughter reconnect. They really helped each other. Maybe you're self-effacing Barbie? Maybe I'm not Barbie anymore. Barbie Margot says this before she realizes that she said it and then immediately realizes it's true. You understand that humans only have one ending. Ideas live forever. Humans, not so much. You know that, right? I do. Being a human can be pretty uncomfortable. I know. I mean, humans make up things like patriarchy and Barbie just to deal with how uncomfortable it is. I understand. And then you die. I want... I want to be a part of the people that make meaning. Not the thing that's made. I want to be the one imagining, not the idea itself. Does that make sense? <laughs> I always knew that Barbie would surprise me, but I never expected this. Do you give me permission to become human? You don't need my permission. But you were the creator. You control me. <laughs> I can't control you any more than I could control my own daughter. I named you after her, Barbara. I always hoped for you like I hoped for her. Your mother stands still so our daughters can look back and see how far they've come. So being human isn't something I need to ask for or even want. It's just something I discover I am. I can't, in good conscience, let you take that leap without knowing what it means. Take my hands. She does. Now close your eyes. She does. Now feel. We see details of Barbie Margot, her eye, her forearm, her pulse, life. And she feels and sees what a human life is. The joy and pain of being mortal, all that she will lose and gain. We see flashes of life live, unadorned home footage of many women's lives. Happiness, sadness, big moments, little moments, childhood, adulthood, old age. How it all rushes by in one moment. Each life drifting into the next, somehow capturing the current that runs through all things. Back to Barbie. Tears roll down Barbie Margot's face. She opens her eyes and says one thing. Yes. Exterior real world, Los Angeles day. We boom down to the streets of LA. So Barbie left behind the pastels and plastic of Barbie land for the pastels and plastic of Los Angeles. Gloria pulls up to the curb. Nerdy, well-meaning dad rides shotgun. Sasha and Barbie Margo in the back seat. Well, thanks for the lift. You got this. I'm so proud of you. Estoy muy orgullosa de ti. Thank you. You guys are the best. Okay, let's do this. Si se puede. That's a political statement. It's appropriation, Dad. <laughs> they all cheer her on as she walks from the car into a big building. We see that she's wearing Birkenstocks. Pink, of course, but still Birks. Interior office continuous. Nervous, happy, she finds the right door and walks up to a reception desk. To the woman behind the glass. 
Hi. Name? Oh, um, Handler, comma, Barbara. And what are you here today for, Barbara? And then she says with so much pride, so much anticipation, so much meaning, so much deep joy. I'm here to see my gynecologist. Cut to black before anyone can even process that sentence. The end. Oh, and what a line to go out on. I then... <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. That was a fantastic reading. That was brilliant. It was a great time. We'll see y'all next time.